In a recent video, I took a look at a very odd little ozone producing device from eBay. And I was kind of taken by it. The reason I bought it in the first place, it was a very mysterious thing. There was no data sheet about it or anything. And it was available as a four wire or a two wire version. And I got the four wire version because I just thought, well, let's find out what the circuitry is. I could see in the pictures that there was a relay inside. And I wanted to reverse engineer it just as a puzzle and see what, what is the wiring, what is its purpose. And it was quite fun to reverse engineer. Um, it turns out that these may actually be for sterilising chopsticks. So a very chinese -y type of thing. And the listing usually says something like 2-4-wire universal ozone generator negative ion sterilisation ozone sensor power. It's nothing to do with negative ions. And the sensor, I'm not even sure what that, that's to do with. Although having said that, this one does have a safety interlock. Um, that is about it. So, having seen the picture of the other one, I decided to get this to take a look at the circuitry. And this one had very simple circuitry, very weird circuitry, that used uh, that drove this circuitry half wave. I reckon this one drives it full wave, and you can kind of hear that. Now, things were their note. Well, a couple of things were the note. The wire was split right through here, so it's got exposed copper. Well, copper coated diamond or whatever it is. Another thing that's worthy of note is that uh, this one had a cover that just entirely clipped on. This one had screws. I didn't spot that for a while. I was prizing at that cover for quite some time before um, realising that there were screws holding it shut. So I'm going to let you hear these devices. Uh, so you can get an idea of how they, how differently this sounds. So I'm going to stuff these wires into the hoffy. And I'm going to power it up. And this one makes a distinct, fairly coarse buzzing noise, suggesting it is a 50 hertz half wave. Draws about 7 milliamps, has fairly decent power factor of about 0.7, and consumes about 1.3 watts. Okay. I'll show you what this looks like afterwards as well. The tubes, they're very nice, uh, very stylish. It does, I can smell it, it does create ozone. I shall now power up this one and you'll hear that it sounds completely different. So I'm just stuffing the wires into these non-compliant terminals. Bring this down into view here. And you can hear it's much higher pitched. The reason for that is it appears to be firing on both half waves and the power factor here suggests that the voltage and in the circuitry, well, it's only active for a very small part of the sine wave. The current is showing us uh, 32 milliamps, but the power is actually lower at just over one watt. So um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you what this thing looks like in the dark, because this tube is very interesting. It's, it's basically a gas-filled tube with an electrode up the middle, and uh, it's got a high-voltage transformer driving it. And the gas couples the electricity to the inside of the tube. Uh, and then it capacitively couples through the glass to the outside aluminium mesh, aluminium mesh. Uh, sometimes they use stainless steel. In this case, they've used aluminium because it's cheap. And then where the electricity, the high voltage is actually creating a corona, it, where it couples through capacitively, it creates a corona discharge and that's what splits oxygen into ozone. But anyway... I'm going to show you what this tube looks like in the dark, and then I'm going to take the circuit board out, reverse engineer it, and we'll take a look at the schematic. Let's explore. Now we've marveled at that crackly looking tube, which is quite a nice effect. So here is the circuitry. This chunk taken out of the circuit board is for electrical separation from the high voltage side over to the low air voltage side. The circuitry is divided into sort of more or less two sections. It's got a capacitive dropper based on this 220 nanofarad capacitor with its little discharge resistor across it. And then a discrete bridge rectifier with four 1N4007 diodes, which rectifies the incoming AC that has been limited by the capacitor and uses it to charge this capacitor over here via the primary of this coil. Inside this coil here, the core, the ferrite core in the middle, you've got a fairly coarse winding inside. So when this uh, thyristor triggers and it discharges the capacitor through this, it induces quite a significant current pulse in this that then is coupled across to these fine windings and generates the high voltage and output. The thyristor here is triggered by two resistors forming a just a bridge and it's very strange circuitry. So if you want to go at reverse engineering this yourself, 
here is the component side and here is the track side which I've doodled the component values on okay let's bring in the schematic here's the AC come in and it gets limited effectively by this uh, 220 nanofarad drop capacitor with its 470k resistor very standard you see this in so much stuff just because capacitive droppers are a great way of powering circuitry easily, uh, especially where it's not going to be touched by human hands. You don't want to stick fingers in this. It then goes to the BigClive.com Lazy Bridge Rectifier. I could draw this, uh, hold on, I'm going to draw it the correct way underneath. So there is a terminal at each corner. We've got the diodes pointing towards the positive. All the diodes point towards the positive. This is what I'm actually abbreviating when I draw that bridge rectifier. The easiest way to remember this is the diodes all point towards the positive. So there's the AC connection, there's a the positive, and there's the negative, which all the diodes are pointing away from. And what happens is when, say for instance, this one's positive and this one's negative, the positive is gated through that diode to positive, the negative is gated to through that diode to negative, and then when it swaps polarity and this goes positive, it goes through that diode and the negative goes through that one, it just alternates. It's like a little gate that just rectifies it. So whereas you had the AC on this side, by the time it comes out this side, because it's not smoothed, it will be a series of humps like triple boobies. There we go. So that uh, rectified but unsmoothed DC then goes through this inductor. That's the really coarse winding of the transformer and charges this 220 nanofart capacitor. Then the thyristor is just across that, but it's also across the incoming supply. It's a bit strange. It's simple. That's what they've done. They've gone for simplicity instead of efficiency. But there is this potential divider based on a 470k resistor, which is quite high, and a 1k3 resistor, which is quite low. And it means that when it gets up to somewhere near, and this is, they've juggled the values of these. That's, in a sense, uh, is 1k3, hold on, 1k3, is that a standard value? One moment. No, it's not a standard value. I've not got it my standard range here. It will possibly be a standard value in one of the one of the sort of selections of resistors, but they've juggled the value of this resistor to match that so that the thyristor reaches its trigger point somewhere at the sort of near the top of the sine wave. And at that point it's charged that capacitor, it suddenly turns on at that point and conducts solidly for the rest of that part of the sine wave. So it's only really charging during that bit, but then it's just shunting it. And it, it, it's no great deal. The capacitive dropper isn't bothered by stuff like that. But it will be quite a current spike, both on this side as well as this side. Um, there was what looks like a position for a resistor. It, it says, hold on, let me show you this. If I bring in the top of the circuit board once again, it says 2W10. Is that, it's a strange pinout. I'm not sure what that's for, but 2W10 almost makes me think 2 watt 10 ohm. A resistor in series like that would have been quite useful. However, when this turns on, it shunts the uh, capacitor and the inductor together. And keep in mind that the current had already flowed in through the inductor and slowly charged up this capacitor as it climbed the sine wave. Now, because it shunted it out, uh, it dumps all the charge in this capacitor shorts it out through this uh, coil and that produces the really high current spike in here that then couples across to the high number of uh, secondary windings and creates the high voltage which goes to the corona discharge plate which could look like that uh, and then you get the sort of like the little sparks trying to get through from one side to the other but they can't go directly they can't just arc across it it's just cut uh, it's got that sort of the glass layer of the tube in it and on one side it's actually coupled by the gas on one side uh, and then the mesh loosely wrapped around the other side means that uh, it forms lots of little tiny sparks and that shows, it would show as a purple glow if it wasn't illuminating the inside. I'm not sure what gas that is. It could be argon, it could be xenon or I don't think it's just pumped to the vacuum. I think it's probably as a gas. But that's what happens on each half of the 
waveform. It's not an efficient way of doing things. Another approach to this would have been to charge the capacitor on one half of the wave and then fire the thyristor on the other half. It's In a sense, this is quite a complex circuit for that that could have been much more efficient. But it is what it is. It's how they've done it, and it works. So that's uh, that. I'll keep an eye out for other devices like this. But um, ultimately, uh, that's this one done to death now. It's, uh, it's I've shown both of these devices. The tube is very intriguing, very strange. And as far as we could see, it is a chopstick sanitizer. But that's it. That is, uh, those two modules covered. Uh, very interesting, nice to look at. I don't know if they'd work. If you wanted to try this in 110 volts, you'd have to lower the value of this resistor uh, to actually pass enough current to actually trigger it earlier in the sine, the sine wave. Because if you tried it in 110 volts, it probably wouldn't trigger. But you know what? I'm going to give that a go. And I'll, I'll put in the description down below if that worked or not. So um, that's it. Interesting circuit. It works. It creates the ozone. You don't need much ozone to have the sanitizing effect. It does the job.